next on Investigative Report. Toxic Roadway. In America, state and local governments with the federal assistance either built or maintained approximately 40,000 miles of roadway at a cost of some $203 billion annually. But the cost to repair the ecology damaged by the runoff chemicals from all that roadway maintenance is too innumerable to count. Those heated surfaces long at the cooling process for decades leach high concentrations of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons which have the potentiality of causing diseases such as cancer. The black tar, as most people refer to it, is actually asphalt bitumen, which is a binding material engineered from refined oil. That oil-based product washes into near drainage ditches to sewers and eventually ends up in our creeks, waterways, and oceans. One could easily imagine that in effect, we are making guinea pigs of ourselves on the periodic table of chemicals. Understanding where all those tar roadways originate from would lead us to believe that the government itself was the greatest contributor to the destruction of the ecology. Before this, most people would be led to believe that the average citizen contributed more damage to our ecology than one government entity alone. Now, whether that government builds roads at the federal, state, or cheaper repairs performed to seal coat streets on a local level, it still adds more poisons to our ecology and our drinking water. These oil-based products have affected generations of Americans from streets we depend upon to drive to cisterns that hold and transport our drinking water. These carcinogens are not just on the roadways that workers build with tar or bitumen, but on those older roads that they coat with a product termed coal tar. In the past, coal tar and bitumen have been used to coat insides of cast iron water mains. Left unchecked for generations, these polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons may leach from these coatings into drinking water and form a potential health risk for all humans. Additionally, these products have been used to coat just about every commercial rooftop and are involved in the making of residential roofing tiles that protect most homes in America today. All these products and services are approved as safe by the federal government. Could it be that as citizens we have been duped for decades on end into believing that we, instead of the government, are the largest contributors to greenhouse gases and environmental pollution? For the longest time, the EPA has been producing commercials in partnership with the government to warn the average citizen about potential runoffs from our vehicles and littering on the ground to include aluminum cans and plastics that damage the ecology. But when it comes to proving that the government is greater contributor to harming the ecology than its citizens, all you have to do is look towards their own internal documentation on this one particular issue. In an impact statement, on the damages of tar-based sealants as toxins to our waterways and citizens alike, we look to the USGS or the United States Geological Survey. The USGS is an agency of the United States government and is the sole science agency for the Department of Interior with its headquarters located in beautiful Western Virginia. On April 13th of the year 2015, the Office of Communication and Publication under Miss Jennifer LaVista authored the following report. Their report detailed two studies by the USGS and was published in the journals Environmental Science and Technology and reads in part, and I quote, Runoff from the pavement with coal tar-based sealant is toxic to aquatic life, damages DNA, and impairs DNA's ability to repair itself. The document continues on by saying, Pavement seal is a black liquid sprayed or painted on the asphalt of parking lots, driveways, and playgrounds to improve appearance and protect the underlying asphalt and roadways. Pavement ceilings that contain coal tar have extremely high levels of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. 
Kotar's known human carcinogen. Several PAHs are probable human carcinogens and some are toxic to fish and other aquatic life. Rainwater runoff collected as long as three months after this coal tar application caused 100% mortality rate to minnows and water fleas, which are part and base of the food chain. When the test organisms were exposed to ultraviolet radiation to stimulate sunlight, they died. Exposure of fish cells to coal tar sealant runoff damaged their DNA and impaired the ability of the cells to repair DNA damage. The simultaneous occurrence of DNA damage and impairment of DNA repair has important implications for cell health. These studies were done to address the concern that rain runoff occurring within hours or days of coal tar based sealant applications might be toxic to fish and other organisms in streams. The two studies collected and tested simulated runoff at various stages beginning just hours after the coal tar sealant and other applications. The USGS has been studying coal tar sealant as a source of pH damage for 10 years, and findings from these two studies are consistent with what is known about toxicity and genotoxicity of these chemicals. Coal tar sealants have significantly higher levels of pH and related compounds compared to asphalt-based pavement sealants and other urban sources, including vehicle emissions, used motor oil, and tire particles. Now, previous studies have concluded that coal tar sealants are a major source of pH to lake sediments and commercial and residential settings, and that people living near pavement sealed with coal tar have an elevated risk of cancer. End quote. Now, as I inferred a moment ago, that this would make the government the largest contributor to the ecology damage. But let us take a look at where the average American citizen assists that government in pollution. When it comes to roadways, sure, all of us need that tar service to desperately bring industry products and goods into the hands of consumers. We use these roadways each day to go to and from work. And as far as vacations, there is nothing better than packing the whole family in a car trip just to hear the kids say, are we there yet? But as a society, we participate in a more subtle way than any one government agency or manufacturer will wish to be known. We move down that roadway each day on four tires that are specifically made from the exact same ingredients as that tar road. We carry our family on four tires with a recipe of 60% rubber produced from crude oil. Crude oil is the primary raw material in making those tires. And according to the Rubber Manufacturers Association, it takes approximately seven gallons. That's right, I said seven gallons of oil to produce one single car tire. That's an equivalent of 28 gallons of oil for all four tires on your car. And this is remarkable in itself in that it only takes about one gallon of oil to sustain the engine of that entire car. But why are car tires as important as tar in polluting our waterways and ecology? Well, that's simple. Those tires have everything to do with us matching the government's distribution of harmful chemicals into the waterways after heavy rainfall runoff. As we drive our car tires down the road, we wear down the tread of that toxic petroleum-based product. This is the whole concept of our tires becoming bald, similar to a pencil eraser, as those tires make contact with that abrasive road surface. Over time, those tires ground down into sandy granulated pieces of solid oil. What does not wash away remains as flammable as when it was liquid state prior to the tire's origination. These rubberized petroleum particles are just small enough and buoyant enough to be picked up and swept away with the first heavy rain down the culverts beside the roadway. They travel easily through sewers and eventually larger collection points where they either pollute waterways, treatment plants, or our drinking water facilities. During that oil's journey to the sea, they affect fish as well as natural wildlife. These poisons affect us, the ecology, or drain back out to sea in a different form of damage that no floating plastic bottle alone could match.
one way or another, the next time you turn on that faucet to get a glass of cool water, take a shower, wash that growing baby, or dip your head under the warm water at the stressful day, understand that we are all bathing in the same water that the government in its own words insists is harmful to humans and animals alike. Yes, these polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons can reach water bodies also through dry and wet deposition as easily as wind blowing through a dry, crumbly shingle. Those particles travel easily from road runoff, industrial wastewater, leaching from creosote impregnated petroleum spills, and fossil fuel combustion. They are generally carcinogens that induce lung, bladder, as well as skin cancer. Now knowing this, you may ask yourself the question, is our drinking water safe? Are we safe to drink the water out of the tap at the end of a backyard water hose? For the most part, the government says yes. As for investigative report, we looked into the processes as to how local treatment plants get rid of these pH contaminants in our drinking water. Concerning physical chemical treatment methods, the most commonly applied to remove PAH from water and membrane filtration systems, absorption, advanced oxidation processes as electrochemical treatments. At the end of all these wastewater treatments, the government has a tolerance level of PAH being able to survive the existence of extensive cleaning method. The Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA for short, has a maximum contaminant level of pH in drinking water as 0.2 ppb of drinking water. Now, ppb stands for parts per billion and is used to measure the concentration of solution of contaminants per the mass of water to be consumed by a person. In short, parts per billion, or ppb, are the most commonly used term to describe very small amounts of trace level of contaminants in our drinking water. One PBB is equivalent to one drop of impurity in 500 barrels of water, or what the government considers as approximately one penny out of $10 million. We did the math on this equation, and it roughly equals out to placing one drop of contamination in a swimming pool sized body of water. The government considers this to be an acceptable risk. If it is an acceptable risk to you, then I say, bottoms up. For investigative report, this is Charles Rivers. Thank you for watching.